defend the world from the return of the Shadow Kings, just as the brave Pharaoh did 5,000 years ago. YouTube Vintage Yu Gi Oh! here today. We have a package. It's been a long time since I've done a mail day. Um, I'm actually just kind of middlemanning the deal. This was a very big purchase. Uh, it's a collection with some graded cards, some raw cards. The reason I'm doing a video today is most of these cards that are raw are supposed to be in near mint or better condition. So I want to do a condition uh, video just to have all of it here on proof. So I'm going to fast forward here of me opening it, but it is still factory sealed. Nothing's been done with it. So we all see what we have inside. All right, we're back. We got a compressed air duster no just kidding we have cards with some some layers still to go zoom through this we got one graded card here a blue eyes white dragon psa 9 first edition lob so guy like said uh not to worry about the graded cards maybe that is the only graded card i don't know because these are all not slab sized bricks so so don't worry about that just look at the condition of the raw card so all right real quick no i don't really like the band-aid or the band-aid the rubber band is too tight here it's kind of pressing down here on the end don't really like how he packaged that it was so tight one actually broke so note on that all right we're generally through the packaging once again another note this thing these rubber bands are too tight um, I get using rubber bands, but they don't need to be that tight. Just just use some masking tape and tape the sides together and make it a brick. I mean, it was pretty well packed, but it was, it was over packed there with how tight those rubber bands were. So, yeah, we're going to go through these and we're going to look at the condition and see, see if these are all near mint or better. Like I said, don't ask if these cards are for sale. None of these cards are mine. This is just a middleman deal. Uh, many thousands of dollars worth. So um, I am just simply the guy between two people and their money and their cards. So don't like how they he uh, kind of double sleeved here. So we have a blue or a blue eyes. We have a trihorn glossy, really clean front. Print one on the back. Other than that, though, I have to get some sleeves because I'm not going to keep these double sleeved like this. So first card, pretty solid on condition. This video is going to be pretty, pretty long, probably. But uh, should be some good cards to look through. Oh, we have a second copy here. This one is got a little corner band, another little quarter band. This is definitely light played at best. Some scuffing on the back, so... We'll uh, kind of keep maybe the not so good ones in the original sleeves. You have a Gate Guardian. If I can <laughs> open it the right way. Yeah, it seems like all these are double card. So first copy here. Very nice, a little off center, but he's not worried about that. Ooh, yeah, we got some nice little indents there. Some fingernail indents or something, so this automatically goes to LP. So we'll see what the second copy is here. This one's got a couple scuffs, kind of bigger scuff up there, right there. Uh, I would still call this for the Jinzo. I mean, this is probably a near mint card, even with the scuffs, but the lower end. Probably a seven if you grade it. Yeah, this Gate Guardian is probably getting a six. Put that in the not so great pile. Up next, we have Starter Deck Dark Magician. Epic, epic card there. Beautiful foiling, beautiful front. Little tiny nick up there on the top edge, but nothing super bad. And yeah, really clean card. A little white, couple white nicks, but yeah, probably probably eight or nine. And the second card, do we think it's a blue eyes? 
<laughs> off in left field. We have a, like 2007 or 8 Magic Arm Shield. Got a little print line there, but that's that's nothing major. And back pretty solid. So yeah, probably uh probably an eight, eight or nine. I'm I'm kind of hypercritical on like if it's not a ten, I kind of gravitate towards an eight because if it's not a ten in my mind, then there's like an obvious fall then which makes it not mint. So I kind of can skip from 10 to eight pretty fast, but a lot of these cards probably could get maybe nines that I'm describing as eights, but I just, I'm very hesitant on saying something is a nine. Got a little couple white nicks. This is a super faded wavy guy at the Fierce Knight. A little OC, yeah, some silvering on the edging down there. You guys can see that. And uh, yeah, we got all kinds of pin dots, some gunk. Little indent going on right there. So this is uh, this is LP played at best. And the second card in the top loader, a regular guy the first night got a nice nick out of the side there. Some more gunk scuffing, couple hollow scratches, more whitening down on the bottom, and scratching on the back. LP at best. LP played. All right, Curse of Dragon. More LOB. I, I I don't know what the rest of these cards are. I I don't know what's in this this collection. I was just told to look over them. Got a print line. You can see it right there, almost off the card. There you go. On the Curse of Dragon was some foil scratching. Couple of nicks, some gunk, and another indent on the back there. And another tiny, tiny dent right there. So he said these were supposed to be overall pretty good, but so far we're, uh, what, like maybe 50% that are near mint or better. So we'll see how the rest of this goes. Curse of Dragon copy number two, some foiling, scratching kind of down here by its mouth. Right there, you can see more whitening, whitening, tiny scuffs. I mean, this, oh, and we got a bend there on the corner. So this is probably a six or so, maybe a five. One of my favorite cards coming up here. And let's see if there's anything wrong with it. It's more gunk. I think that would probably rub off. A little waxing, a little a little edging up there that'd probably bring it down to an eight or nine. But yeah, this one's this one's near mint. You can't can't say it's not for sure. Even with that little edge thing, the rest of the card is clean enough where I would describe that as near mint. And this one is not going to be near mint, just based on that whitening that I see so far. And another edge and then there, copy number two, Dark Magician of Chaos. Yeah, I would put this in, and it's kind of got a small corner bend there too. So yeah, definitely LP. White play play on that one. And another classic from Invasion of Chaos. We have Black Luster Soldier. See what it's looking like. Nice. Nice bend there right off the top. So this thing's going in the played pile for sure a couple pin dots and yeah just seen some heavy scratching there on the back so so far i would not really go out of my way to grade a lot of these copy two a little gunk a little whitening Actually, I don't know if it's copied yet. It is copied too. A little white down at the bottom. I would still call this near mint, but once again, towards the lower end, especially with that whitening down there. You're probably going to get a 7 on this if you grade it. Okay, up next, we have a really cool card that you don't see very often. A dual terminal preview, Blue Eyes White Dragon. And I used to know there was uh, kind of two waves, but depending on the dot size... I used to know what was wave one and what was wave two, but I don't remember anymore. 
we will take a look at it. Man, we got some bangers coming kind of up. And these cards are notoriously damaged just because of how they were stored and dispersed in the machine. But this one actually looks relatively solid, you know, chipping, chipping on the corners, but the surface is really clean. Super off center, but a super, super cool kind of unique card there. Probably a seven with the chipped corners, but that's just kind of, like I said, how those cards exist. And the second card in this sleeve, couple random scratches there, little edge ding right up there at the top. We have dual terminal preview red eyes. That is a very beautiful card. Yeah, little little damage up there in the corner. Once again, I'd probably grade this as a seven, so near mint. Near mint range for sure. Then we have a retro pack because some big hitters got a shining dragon laying down there and we got dragon master knight in my hand. Probably another retro pack card behind it. Uh, some gunk on there. Don't know what, if it would clean it off or not. We got pinholes right there. Those are not going to be able to get removed. And they kind of go through into the back too. And some more tiny dots up there. So like this is a card that I wouldn't call near mint. And probably PSA would probably grade it as such too. They'd probably grade it as a six in my opinion. Um, so we will not put that in the near mint pile. Which a six I think is a near mint light play. Which is kind of what I would describe it as. Alright this card. Very, very solid back. Tiny dot right there. So this copy... This copy is much, much better overall. And yeah, definitely would put this in the probably nine category. And well, I guess we have uh, multiple copies of this, so we'll go ahead and look at copy number three here, and maybe four, depending on what the other card is in the sleeve. So a little silvering there on the corner. And uh, yeah, just kind of a more scuffing, waxing, all kinds of surface really problems here on the back. A little play on that corner and that corner and really all four corners. I'd put this as light played. And the f will we have a copy four? We will not, but we have a big one. Harpy's Feather Duster, tournament pack eight. Um, very hard packs to find and this is a very expensive card in PSA 10. This one is OC off centered and got a little nick up there at the top and on the side. I would still call this near mint though. I think this would probably grade like a, a seven or eight. So it's it's a it's a very fickle fickle world trying to find um you know, PSA 10 condition cards out in the wild. You know, just one, literally one thing on, you know, surface, corners, edges, um, or centering just it automatically makes it not eligible. So it's just, it's tough to find good cards. Like this card, doomed from right when it got cut, off-centered, but absolutely stunning card. Couple little indents down there in the text box. Got some nice hollow bleed on it. Yeah, really not too bad though. Probably an eight. Eight range on the blue eyes shining. Absolutely. Super stunning. I hope they don't reprint Retro Pack 2. Um, I have a lot more Retro Pack 2 than I did Retro Pack 1. Um, I don't think it really affects the value, but it definitely doesn't help the cause in the short term, especially. Um, and Retro Pack 2 is a, a way more available than uh, Retro Pack 1 was also. So I just don't really see the need in that reprint as much as what Retro Pack 1 was. All right, this card looks very solid on the back. And... 
very solid on the front. I think this is probably a PSA 9 condition, off-centered, uh, along with just, you know, a little tiny fall here or there, which is allowed for PSA 9s. Um, so I think that's probably a, 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 a PSA 9. Here's original 1996 Retro Pack 1. So this, uh, this is not the 2020 reprint. Scapegoat. Got some nice kind of patch of, let's see, yeah, right there, I can kind of get it. Some kind of surface issue there, and then all kinds of random scratching. Off-centered, and I would assume these are going to have chip corners. Yep, literally every one of these cards has chip corners. And kind of random surface smudging on the back. This is probably like a PSA 6 or 7 on a good day, 7. And then I'm going to guess this is another Retro Pack 1 card. Yep, another scapegoat. This one's better centered for sure. Better surface for sure, but still has those chipped corners. Jeez, this card sock is so fragile. Yeah, so this is a better condition for sure, but still, you know, maybe an 8, PSA 7, PSA 8 range, so... I'm probably gonna grade a lot of these cards, so you guys, maybe I'll I'll be motivated and snip my little quick pre-grade results here too when I get these cards back and see how well I can grade cards looking at them for about 10 seconds. Fortress Whale, one of my favorite tournament pack cards. First re our first printing of this was in tournament pack seven. Uh, super underrated in my opinion. And a little random scratching there. But other than that, pretty solid. Probably a PSA 9. You never know how PSA is going to grade the surface, especially in the back. Sometimes they just ignore blatant stuff on the back that I would think that should be factored in. And sometimes they just like, nah, it's on the back. We don't care. And let's see what second card in the sleeve is. A little kind of smudge mark up there. We have a copy number two, super off-centered but uh, same kind of general PSA 8. I like. I don't know if you're going to get a PSA 9 on this just because of centering. PSA, but it is definitely near mint. All right. We've got some DDS, at least one DDS card here right on the top. Oh, yeah, we got, we got, we got at, least, at least two blue eyes. Well, let's see if we are going to have a play set here. So copy one, some kind of surface smudging. I don't know if that would clean off or not. Yeah, just some random dots like right there by my thumb and kind of up here. In the back. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely near mint, so can't argue that it's not even with those random surface smudges all right see if this is a second copy and forgot about the play set or not back here we have a couple indents up there on the top but other than that maybe a little rolled corner yep this is another copy surface is much much cleaner on the front though so it's like it just you know if you could combine the best things of you know multiple cards you'd have it but it's like i said one thing just uh prevents certain cards from uh, getting tens and this one when centering is good but yeah that little edge ding and then that one's like centering's bad but everything else is good and so on and so forth so just all the stars have to align to get that magical gem mint grade and that's why they carry the premium and the third copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon Dark Duel Story. Little OC. And this one has, a, like, it does not have that sheen to it like a lot of these OCG printed promos do. Um, but still near mint. And you might be able to buff the surface up a little bit, but um, probably a 7 or an 8 there. So that. That is a beautiful, always beautiful to see these cards there. 
that is a beautiful sight to see and it looks like we are continuing the dds train uh with some dark magicians and unless we have a fourth uh this one just i bet this is like a uh, retro pack or something yep you can just tell by the surface that just by the 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 sheen to it that it was kind of like a euro print so a little scuffing there can some chipping all along the top edge we have a original 1996 trademark so original retro pack and some very small surface scuffing and a little oc so this is kind of borderline light play near mint probably a six or seven and then we are getting into some DDS Dark Magicians, maybe at least one. Centering, little OC, but surface is really good on the front. There is actually a small indent right down there. Now that, once again, just that little thing like that, that's what separates. And then these are very common, these white dots here on the back for DDS. I don't know what caused that but very common to see. So that with that, like, and sometimes PSA will see a dent like that and it's like, you got a six. So if this gets a six, we know why. I would project probably like an eight, maybe a nine, um, but I would not be shocked anywhere from a six uh, to a nine. And then the other copy here, oh yeah, we got a little baby binder dent right there and another indent right there. I'm gonna guess this is another, yep, Dark Magician. This one is definitely played condition. All right, we got more retro pack bangers, absolute bonkers to see. It's like almost a full set. And we, we're we recording for 20 plus minutes and we have, we're not even halfway through. So hopefully you guys enjoy, are enjoying a little more in depth review. Um, it is a little, a little probably slow for you guys, but this is important when you are looking at a many thousand dollar deal. You want to make sure you're getting what you paid for. Some chipping, chipping, but this is, uh, for retro pack terms, very, a very clean card here for Cyber Harpy Lady. So very nice there. And I'm just burning through the penny sleeves. So we'll get out some more sleeves. So yeah, I think that would probably grade uh, maybe maybe an eight, maybe a nine on a wild day. And this one got some scratching. That corner is absolutely dinged, dinged, dinged. Super cool to see a lot of, a lot of surface, just specks and whatnot. So this one probably probably a five or a six. We're into some more big hitters. It's super cool to see these. I have some of these, but I don't really ever look at them. I do have one of the two graded Amazonas Chain Masters, and admittedly, it has a chip on at least one of the corners. So I don't think you're ever going to find like a clean, clean retro pack original printing, but absolute stunning card. Some surface just smudging, but nothing, nothing too big there. Do have a nice dent right there in the back though. Good night. And more corner and whitening. So this is probably played PSA six or so condition. And are we gonna have a second copy or are we gonna have another secret? More chipping going on down here in this corner, that corner, and once again, whitening across the top. But this is retro pack. It's kind of what you'd expect. Surface is very similar. I would call this one cleaner by far than the first copy though with no dent. So not too shabby there. And then we have at least one more retro pack secret. Probably got a copycat and maybe a blast sphere or another ancient lamp. Another super classic retro pack card behind there. Well, chipping, chipping, chipping. 
but I mean, this is probably about how it came out of the pack. It just, that's just the quality control. I mean, people think quality control now is like horrible. I mean, there were eras back in the day where quality control was pretty bad. Old chipping. This is pretty clean, very clean for retro pack. This is much, much better than the first copy, but both were pretty still solid and especially kind of, it's like, you know, RDS or SOD, Soul Duelist. You just like know there's going to be waxing on the card and that's kind of like how you know there's just going to be chipping on the card for Retro Pack 1 original. And you just, you just live with, live with that and factor that in um, when you're buying it. So we are halfway through, so buckle up for another 25 minutes as we go through more old school goodies. Um, skip through some of these a little faster on the kind of the back end of these older cards like Amulet Dragon and Dark Magician Girl and uh, Dragon Knight and so on and so forth. So we'll speed it up a little bit. Dragons of Legend, Amulet Dragon. This one looks very mint. Copy two in the sleeve. Got a nice Eye of Anubis stamp down there. But looks super, super mint there. Eye of Tamias. Yep, super nice. Little OC, but can't use that against conditioning cards for raw cards. Dragon, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight from Dragons of Legend. Again, got a... Nice indent there above the, and back super clean though. I'd still call this near mint. Pin dots are weird too to kind of, like they're probably factory. So it's like, I guess they are a damage in some form, but it's like, they're still, they're still near mint. This copy is much, much nicer. All right, into some MRD, it looks like. We got Solemn Judgment. It had a, I saw, a, I think, a Mirror Force in there somewhere, too. Super cool to see these old cards, regardless of condition, especially when I didn't have to fork over the money uh, to buy them. Oh, yeah, we got, we got hit with a BB gun down there, it looks like. Yep, yeah, this thing, uh, pretty beat, pretty beat. Not gradable. Copy two in the sleeve. What are we going to have? This looks a little more modern, maybe. Got a name stamp through it a little bit. What's it going to be? Yep, Doom Virus Dragon. Yep, just could tell it was a little more modern cardstock. And by modern, I mean probably like 2010. All right, we are finishing off the DDS set from earlier now with the Exodia head. Always a funny like promo to see just like uh, we got all kinds of pin dots up there. Just the head, and then they didn't do any uh, prismatic limbs or anything until, like, uh, well, like, Ultimate Beginner Pack was Secrets or something. Clean back, though, but, yeah, those just, once again, looks like it got hit with, like, a miniature BB gun or shotgun. Um, so I would not personally grade this. And copy two... This is not a promo, the not shiny enough on the back. Dark Magician Girl is a promo, not a video game promo. Yep, just a, you know, a little standard waxing, random scratching, right? PSA eight or nine. Mint near mint plus for sure on that one. A very Cool secret rare here, Blue Eyes Tune from Magic Ruler First Edition. Little smudging up there on the top edge, gonna be hard to get on camera. Nothing major though. We do have like the color, the edge is like a different color there. It's like absorb some ink or something at some point. So that's kind of like they might count that as marked. So I would definitely would not be shocked if they said this was marked because of that right, right there. You might be able to see it pretty well. 
So that'd be uh, that'd be an interesting one to see if they do something with that or if they just dock it for like a dirty edge. And card two in this sleeve, looking pretty beat. Toon Cannon Soldier. These are like always like half the, not always half, about half the time faded. And I'd probably put this outside of near mint condition. All right, up next we have Mirror Force, Metal Raiders, very iconic card. See if it looks better than that Solemn Judgment did. Front looks very nice, pretty off-centered for Metal Raider standards. And the back looks pretty clean, maybe like a small vertical line there. But near mint for sure on this copy. Card two in the sleeve, seeing a little more wear and tear, some heavier scratching on the back for Monster Born and a nice little chunk out of the top there. Glossy copy, I would call this played condition. All right, we got another brick here. We got some more DDS Exodia, probably some more LOB, MRD. See what we got. All right, this is our second Exodia copy. This one does not have the shotgun pellet holes in it. does have some tiny indents so you can see it right there by my thumb and over here so let's see really oh yeah it's kind of right there so yeah still have a little indents and psa is notorious for just saying nope oh, you got a dent to front to back psa 5 so i would not be shocked if that got a psa 5 and second card in this sleeve, ooh, Mystical Space Typhoon. A little OC, but other than that, it looks very nice. No sewage in misprint. You always got to check if you guys saw my recent video on that kind of unknown misprint. Super, super cool for me to find one in the wild. All right, we have a faded, wavy Monster Reborn. This is one of the best artworks in wavy, in my opinion, really. Just the background just looks super good, wavy. And a little weird miscut corner, but that's just kind of par for the course with wavy stuff. And some random scratching and scuffing, but probably a PSA, I don't know, probably a PSA 8. And the other card in this sleeve, I guess this is a wavy copy also. Oh, glossy mirror for, or mirror force monster born. Yeah, this is more clean than the one we saw earlier for sure. Just some random dots and scuffing. It's, it's, it's just very common to see that on LOB though. And, um, but still near mint and some people's grail summon skull always an absolute banger one of the best vanillas ever released with the yellow background there very nice front here and unfortunately for the back got a pin dot up there some whitening there kind of a little edge thing down there and some scuffing scratching going on this is like bottom of the barrel near mint um beautiful binder card but to grade it it's probably a seven but um at that point you're probably just going to get like raw value out of it um at a seven uh pin dot up there at the top and overall that looks pretty solid 
small kind of ding up there at the top for this copy. This one's a little faded. Yep, yeah, this one probably very similar grade overall, probably a seven, maybe an eight for that second copy. Then we have one of my favorite artworks in the game, Dark Paladin. Pack pulled art. You had to send this in, in to get the corrected art. Looks like we might have a bend through this card. So you, you look in the text box here, you can just kind of see how the light reflect, refracts. So yeah, we have a bend. Yep, and it goes through the back. Right there, through the Yu-Gi-Oh! logo. So yep, this bend automated played condition and copy two in this sleeve. What do we have? A left arm of the forbidden one, wavy. Little scuffing there, little pin dot. Kind of foil splatter, which is kind of common or, you know, not unheard of on L.O.B. Wavy. I'd call this within the near mint range, though, for sure. Probably lower in, though. All right. Wow, we have just Dark Paladin after Dark Paladin coming up. So copy two of Dark Paladin. Once again, Super OC. This one does not have a bend. has a little tiny corner ding down there. The back, some random scratching, waxing. But definitely within the near mint field of condition and the second card in the sleeve it's kind of kind of fun to like no one and then kind of have to guess what the second one's going to be because there seems to be no rhyme or reason and it's fun to like without knowing what the front is to like non-partially criticize the back because you don't know if it's like you know a fifteen hundred dollar card or a ten dollar card this back looks um uh, pretty clean it's got some random scratching some waxing and we have a third copy of Dark Paladin, off-centered. But yeah, this one has been the cleanest one so far. And we're going to have a fourth copy of Dark Paladin, and potentially a fifth. So fourth copy, OC again. And kind of got a print line across the back there through the middle. But no whitening, nothing like that. This is a really solid uh, near mint card. And through another pack of sleeves. So, I think I have a bunch of penny sleeves. <sighs> All right, through the Dark Paladin, will we have a fifth copy or what will be here in the sleeve? Got to be indent fingernail mark right in the middle there some whitening 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 this is gonna be yep yeah. oh my and then we have major damage down there and pretty major damage down there so this is probably one of the worst condition cards we've seen so far so we had five dark paladins two were damaged or played or worse and three were near mint all right more exodia we have a wavy right leg. See what it looks like out of the sleeve. Super well centered. Tiny, tiny ding down there on that corner. Some scuffing right there. Pretty heavy scuffing. Yep, picks that up on the camera really well. And yep, there's the ding on the back from the ding on the front. Kind of borderline PSA 7 probably. I'm I'm very critical though. Like if, if I was a greater PSA, no one would like me. All right, we have um, kind of a mark there, and major scuffing. It's right through there. You can see it, just like a patch of like dullness, and similarly up here, kind of towards the knee, on this glossy left leg. So I would probably put this at like a PSA 6. I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. I'm on near mint condition. 
All right. We have two bricks left. Some more LOB. Looks like some IOC. Probably more MRD. Maybe some promos. So if you stuck with me this long, we are almost there. Wavy Flame. One, another one of the best looking cards at, uh, in the wavy variant. Little OC, but the front looks super nice. Back looks very solid as well. Got a little fingerprint on there that, that would probably come off. But yep, this is a very solid near mint card. And second card in the sleeve. Very nice clean back on this one. And we have a right arm, a little couple white nicks on the side. Wavy and uh, yeah, really not a whole lot to complain about other than just a couple white nicks. And that's the difference between, you know, a, a 15 or $1,600 card and a $500 card. <laughs> so it's a, like I said, very fickle world to try to grade and, and make money. Retro Pack 1, limited edition, Blue Eyes Ultimate. Very cool to see. And there's some chipping down there. Standard Retro Pack conditioning. And this looks more modern, super clean. Yeah, Mirror Force Dragon. So the super, super clean, shiny ones, probably going to be from the newer sets. All right, Toon Mermaid Magic Ruler. A little smudge there. Kind of scratching all over the place on the back. A little whitening, more whitening. I'm, I'm calling this light play with that bent white corner down there on the bottom. And the second card in the sleeve. This one looks really solid on the back. Tribute to the Doomed Metal Raiders. Yep, overall, really solid. Very nice, super rare there. Looks like we might go on a little Metal Raiders run here. Seven Tools of the Bandit. Very nice front. And, yep, very clean back. So, one of the nicer cards we've seen. And this one, scuffing right there above my thumb. Some more scuffing towards the middle. Big corner ding there. Mystical Space Typhoon, first edition. Probably putting this in the LP, the little bend going through the bottom corner there. Probably would not be worthwhile grading that. All right. Back on Metal Raiders train for at least one card here. Catapult Turtle. Very clean front. Very clean back. And card two in the sleeve is going to be... Pretty solid on the back. Couple of random scratches. A little smudging up top probably would come off. Yep, overall pretty solid. Probably PSA 9. And last two cards of this brick before our last brick. So we are, we are finally there. Alligator Sword. World Championship. Overall, little coloration issue up there in that corner, but very solid for the rare there. And what will this be? I almost bet that it was, this was going to be the other card. Little surface issue down there, a couple pin dots. But... Overall, near mint condition. And we are on to our final brick. 
<clears throat> okay, let's get into it. Final brick, probably another 12 to 14 cards to go. So this has been a very cool collection to see. Like I said, none of these. I, I'm just the middleman. I'm going to post this video. I'm going to let the buyer look at it, decide if um, we've sent half the money so far, and let him figure it out with the seller if the condition is up to his standards of what he thought he was purchasing or not, and let them figure it out. And I'll be glad to, you know, mediate if, you know, there needs to be any returns or anything like that. Hopefully it works out for both parties, though. Um, but I just want to fairly show the condition of these cards and let the the buyer and seller figure it out from there so we have chaos emperor dragon front looks very clean back some random scuffing smudging dots worth of surface issues there but no real eh kind of a lined indent up there in the corner probably like psa seven or eight um, wouldn't be shocked with an eight. Um, but I like to be, I like to be harsh. Um, just cause once again, I don't want to hype up a card or condition and then it'd be in worse condition than, um, it's described. This one definitely has a small crease bend going on right there. You see the little ripple and... Yeah, that's a shame. Otherwise, pretty solid card. But yeah, see, once again, just like one little thing, one little thing is all it takes. So this goes from being in the near mint pile to the not so near mint pile, just with that. Then we have another version of Alligator Sword Dragon WP11, the super rare variant little whitening but nothing like i just think that's how it was manufactured and the back looks a little tiny bend there on the corner and a tiny scratch down there so psa probably wouldn't like that little corner bend probably put it in the seven range which is technically near mint and i i mean i'd probably call that ungraded near mint it's just you know it's tough because it's a very obvious flaw once you see it this one's kind of got like a line going up and down the whole back but i don't think it's really anything too ooh, like it's not damage and front hollow looks really clean here on the alligator sword and i'd call this near mint all day all right we're going to finish with some classics it looks like we have lob MRD for sure. What else are we going to have in these last few cards? Secret Rare, Guy of the Dragon Champion. First edition. Off-centered. We can't, can't fault that. And a little scuffing. Heavier, heavier scuffing. Waxing going on on the back. A little tiny indent down, indent down there on the corner. But overall... Lower end of near mint, but near mint nonetheless. And then the second card in this sleeve. Back looks really nice. Kind of a weird kind of cut on that corner down there, but I don't think that's anything worth noting. And a beautifully faded Bee Skull Dragon. Yep, very nice looking card there. Probably a PSA 9 or so. Maybe a 10 on an absolute wild day at the grading office. All right. We are we are getting down to it. We have eight cards left. Time Wizard. Iconic MRD. Front looks very nice. Back. Some scuffing, some scratching. Little corner ding down there. Edge ding up there. This is probably a PSA 6. Maybe a PSA 7. But I'm going to be harsher than most for sure. Beautiful binder card, but 
yeah, kind of wasting money in my opinion if you graded it. This one has mega edge coloration, tiny crease up there, back scratching, dark magician of chaos. This is moderately played at best. All right, we got some RP02, at least one more copy with Dredgeth Harvester. Front looks very nice, and the back <laughs> has a weird indent down here where the Eye of Anubis is, but PSA loves to, to ding you for that, and it's got a little rolled corner, but near mint, for sure, it just, PSA sometimes dings you on that, and then they sometimes realize that's just the Eye of Anubis stamp coming through, and they're like, eh, we actually don't care, but most of the time they ding you. And this copy looks like another Dragons of Legend, probably copy. Oh, yo. Or the WP11 World Promo. Parrot Dragon, super, super cool card. And, yep, Near Mint Plus, for sure. Probably a 9. It's hard to call really anything a 10 anymore. <laughs> like, it's... It's very hard to get tens consistently. Dra Dark Magic Attack Ancient Sanctuary, super cool artwork there with Dark Magician. Being the corner there, kind of folded up on itself, accordion style. And yeah, kind of shows on the front too. PSA probably give it a seven overall still, but lower end of the near mint because of that corner ding. Down to our final three cards. A uh, little tiny whitening on that corner. Dark Magic Attack Copy 2. This one's definitely better than the first one. PSA 8 or 9. And we are down to the final two cards. So if you've stuck with me this long, I appreciate it. Very cool, but um, very expensive. Big collection here, so... Kind of just some dullness on the hollow here to the uh, left of the tower here and some just hollow scratching. And the back, little white nick there, little white nick there, white nick there, and some scuffing on the back. Probably a PSA 7 or so, so still technically near mint. And our final card of the video, a little scuffing on the back, a little chipping. I'm going to guess this is a retro pack, maybe. Ah, another Yap card, which also checks out. These cards are famous for chip corners. They're very hard to grade. But beautiful alternate art there, Red Eyes, Bee Dragon. To finish it off, probably PSA 7 or so condition. So... I don't know how many cards there were total, but this is kind of what I deemed near mint. Do it in two little swift piles here. This is what I deemed near mint. Nothing like really stood out is like this is a guaranteed 10. So it's like tough on like the, the seven through nine. And I'm sure some would sneak in as 10s, especially some of these like Newer cards from Dragons of Legend. But, I mean, very cool to see just, you know, this many raw cards out in the wild from the era that I really love to, to collect and grade. And so, nonetheless, even if, you know, stuff doesn't work out, it was cool to see these cards. I mean, Waving Glossy Monster Reborns, Mirror Force, Dark Magician Girl... All the Retro Pack 1 original stuff, very fitting that, you know, this comes through my hands after the release of the reprint. All these DDS cards, I mean, just super iconic to see. Just super, super cool. TP stuff, always fun to see. More Retro Pack, just beauties all day long. So, yeah, that is what I deem near mint.
That one's kind of borderline with a lot of whitening. Yeah, maybe that. I remember talking about that summit skull. And these are the ones that I deem LP or worse. Time Wizard, Chaos Emperor, Left Leg, two of the dark, two of the five Dark Paladins, Zodi Head with the pin dots, or maybe it had a dent. This one had the pin dots, the other one I think had some other damage. Amazon is Cyber Harpy, Dark Magician, Dragon Master, Demog, couple Cursed Dragons, both guys, a Guardian, and Trihorn. So, not too, too many. Um, definitely the stack is bigger for the Nair Mint versus LP. So, hopefully the buyer and seller can agree on um, some some middle ground if, um, if this is not what they expected. But I just kind of wanted to be transparent. That um, with my personal opinion on the conditions and they can go from there so hopefully you guys enjoyed this very long collection video um, super cool to see all these cards and uh, let me know your thoughts on what your favorite card was uh, any questions and as always thanks for watching